Okay, good morning, everyone. We, we're just waiting on all of our board of directors to join us. We are really, really happy to be here with you to share what Music TT has been doing for the past three years. And we are delighted to introduce, well, to have with us Mr. John Arnold, our chairman of Music TT. We also acknowledge Mr. Calvin Bijou, our chairman of Creative TT, our boards of directors of Music TT, Mr. Martin Raymond Mice, who is no stranger to any of you, and of course, Mr. Francis Eskai. So we are about to kick off this because I'm sure you are just as interested in learning about our projects as we are from hearing from you. So Mr. John Arnold, please. Mr. Arnold, you need to unmute your mic. My apologies. Good morning and welcome to this session, What's Happening at Music TT. Indeed, let me thank all of you for joining us this morning as we report to the nation all the major achievements of Music TT over the past three years. Despite some of the challenges, of course, of modern times and the pandemic and so on. As we start, let me recognize and thank a number of persons who are critical to the success of Music TT. First, let me thank the hardworking minister for her visionary leadership, the Honorable Paula Kopi Schoon. Let me also thank the current permanent secretary and the staff of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. I want to say thanks to the other directors of Music TT, Francis Sky and Martin Raymond, who are superbly competent, highly knowledgeable, and certainly experience in the music industry. And uh, they have really contributed a lot to uh, Music TT, the nation, and of course, Trinidad Tobago. Thanks to the amazing staff of Music TT. Uh, Melissa, I call her Melissa Never Tired Jimenez, and the super talented duo of Mate, Moan Mohan, and Gabriela Diga. Mariela Diga. <laughs> Extended thanks also to the support of the parent board, Creative TT Chairman, Calvin Bijou, other board members and staff of Creative TT, Film TT, and Fashion TT. Amazingly, all three subsidiary boards work as a cohesive, a great cohesive unit to support each area of discipline that we cover. A special thanks also to all the music stakeholders, corporate TNT and the media. At the outset, let me remind you of the overall mandate of Music TT. As a subsidiary of Trinidad and Tobago Creative Industries Company Limited, Music TT mandate is to stimulate and facilitate the business development and export activity of the music industry in Trinidad and Tobago to generate national wealth. As a board, we have continued the true watchwords of corporate governance, transparency, accountability, and good governance. Today, you will get a more detailed report of all the initiatives and achievements of Music TT in the feature presentation by the general manager. However, let me underscore some broad areas of achievement that we can all bear in mind as we, uh, as we experience this webinar today. The stakeholder engagements we have focused a lot on that, and these have been major initiatives for us. And uh, earlier pre-COVID, we had these in physical attendance. Post-COVID, we had these all done on social media platforms. And some of those, of course, would have included things like reverb webinars and tea time and so on. The second area, the key initiatives of Live Music District and Spotlight Program they have definitely created a buzz in the ecosystem, and you'll hear some more details on that today. The third area that I think has been really significant is collaborations with other agencies. We have collaborated with not only government ministries, but several other corporate bodies and other organizations, and we have seen amazing results as this web of networking has borne fruit at every turn. Fourthly, we've had international participation and collaboration where we have participated at international conferences like MIDEM, right? Um, and this, of course, has helped to raise the awareness and visibility of Music TT 
and TNT by extension. The fifth area I think that we would hear more about would be capacity building. And this has been one of the key areas that we focus a lot on. And the six areas, the export opportunities, you'll hear about some of the artists that we've been able to help um, outside um, to fly the flag for TNT, and also about the intellectual property opportunities of the recently launched album of our Spotlight. Finally, let me say the creative sector, everyone knows, has taken a massive blow within the last 15 months of the pandemic. The loss of earnings to the sector has been described as phenomenal in some places and colossal in some places. The data is there to support that. However, there were several other opportunities that presented themselves for the music industry, and we must be ready to surmount those challenges. And with the help of technology, we'll be able to afford some new parts as we recognize the opportunities so that the entire music fraternity of TNT would benefit and our mandate is followed to the hilt. Thank you very much. Please continue to be safe. Practice the three W's, wear masks, watch your distance, and wash your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Now it is my absolute pleasure to present our General Manager of Music TT, who never ever stops with encouraging us to keep pushing on all projects. Melissa, this is all you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so I am just going to dive straight into the presentation. Let me just pull that up for you. All right, so um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, you have any questions, of course, please place them in the chat. Our officers, whether you have questions on Facebook or you have questions in Zoom, um, for those who are viewing live via Facebook, welcome. Again, just place your questions there and our officers will take the questions from there and place it in the Zoom chat for us to deliver at the end of everything. Um, keep your mics muted, of course, and yeah. I'll just dive into it. So my chairman just touched on this, so I'm going <laughs> to just skip past this and get to the next one. All right. So I just slipped this in here for those persons who are a little bit unfamiliar with Music TT. I've heard a few times that, you know, Person's telling me, oh, I thought your 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 company was um, twenty persons in staff and fifteen persons. I was like, no, it's a lovely three um, <laughs> that do a good bunch of this work. So um, so props to my two officers who are very hardworking, Mati Manmohan and Mariella Dikans. And I always like to start out when I'm giving presentations, especially if there's new people in the midst, um, to give them an understanding of this. So there's an iceberg reference that talks about, you know, when you look at the shape of an iceberg, there's the big parts that we see on top, and then there's the little funnel at the bottom. So I like to refer to Music TT as that in terms of our, our educational offerings and what Music TT does. It helps the masses. It helps a lot of people build capacity and learn new things and you know, be, be ready and developed and gearing ahead to, to forge ahead in their music industry career, right? However, the reality of it is only a few persons would emerge successful. And if we go to World Facts, World Facts says that 91% of artists remain undiscovered, 1% make up the superstars, and 8% make it to the limelight or are able to make a decent living off of their craft. So all of that said, success for us um, is defined as you know, uh, creation of industry-related companies, implementation and execution of global best practices, um, 
fans following acceptance international deal regional tours international tours and that type of thing you know so we 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 can't expect you know one year something happens with a program two years something happens with a program it takes a number of years before something can develop from the artists and the producers and other stakeholders that we develop so just to keep that in mind um so these are some statistics about the, the program itself. So we have the LMD us, LMD for those who are not familiar is the Live Music District, which we had 740. Um, the direct impact. So direct impact is defined as workshops, conferences, networking events, the open call webinars, things that we can definitely put a number two. We've seen persons in seats or they've attended the webinars. We know what that number is. This is the direct impact. Then we have the indirect impact. So the indirect refers to PR events, launch events, partnerships like Live at Lunch and We Beat and um, sponsorships. These are the peripheral events that allow people to learn about Music TT and learn about our programs, et cetera. Um, or who have attended our programs in the masses that it is. The webinars, well, the webinars are the webinars. So that all refers to the reverb platform. So the number of webinars to date that we've done are 38. We aim to do one per month. So we're actually above that. And our Spotlight alumni, you learn more about our Spotlight program as I go along. Um, it now stands at 32 persons. We aim to take in between six to 10 persons per year and we're now in our fourth year. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna pull up all the points here. So the Spotlight Program 2, we completed that in 2019. We're looking at 2019 activities. The Live Music District, we participated in the We Beat Festival. This is the large festival that happens in St. James and um, Woodbrook and Port of Spain and environs, as well as Cari Festa that year. Um, we also held under the Live Music District a special flood relief for the live, um, live Music District Conference, um, where we donated all the items received to feel. Uh, I don't know if many of you would have remembered that year, but that was the last year we had a really, really, really terrible um, flooding situation across Trinidad and Tobago. Um, for Carafesta, we did 30 events over 30, 60 performances by both local and regional artists in partnership with Export TT, um, eight artists were afforded the opportunity to sell their merchandise as well over the two days at the Car Festa, the Grand Market. So the creation of the Reverb webinars, we produced six that year and uh, they are all presented by industry professionals. So the six Reverb, that was produced as I'm sorry, Reverb was created <laughs> that year. I needed to mention that this was the start of the Reverb um, thing. And then we are now at 30 something episodes. I think we had 38 there just now, right? And we're rolling out a campaign on Facebook right now where every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you can view Reverb sessions. We also had a partnership with WIPO, the World Intellectually Property Organization, as well as the TTIPO, the Trinidad and Tobago Intellectual Property Organization. Um, Music TT was the producer for the Building Respect for IP video alongside TTIPO. And uh, we had a video featured with local sensation Ufan Alves and Renuka. She is the female singer of Delina Dan. So this video was aired to the WIPO General Assembly to 191 different countries. And they use it as an educational tool to let persons know more about IP. So this is the second commission 
video. The first one was Malawi. So we were pretty honored that they would have considered Trinidad and Tobago to be that second one. And they're still continuing to use it to this day, as well as the local IPO office in letting people learn more about IP. Uh, if you want to view that video, you can go across to our YouTube channel to see that. So the So Stereo partnership, um, So Stereo is a sync licensing company. And the idea behind this is that it's to enable emerging artists to monetize and expand their revenue and career through sync licensing. So more and more now, uh, with this pandemic, of course, we have to explore those different areas. They've always existed, but Trinidad and Tobago has really tapped into that. So sync licensing is definitely one of those areas that we're tapping into. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so Stereo is an integral partner with us on that. Forward frequency. Now, this event happened, I think it was September that year. Um, it featured CEO of Royalty and Respect Management, Monty G. Green, um, super producer, Casey Phillips, uh, international PR consultant, Tennille Clark, and renowned songwriter, Daryl Jouvet. We partnered in that event with Kingdom Management, um, to, run by Timothy Maloney, um, as well as D Music and Guardian Group. We had 150 persons attend, and the patrons were very, very happy and grateful for that information. Um, this was an event, just a small anecdote, where you know that day in particular was so rainy, and uh, and. Uh, we were like, we weren't sure what the output would look like on that day in terms of persons attending. And in the middle of the event, well, I shouldn't say in the middle, closer to the ending of the event, a hurricane alert um, was sent out. So we were like, okay, we need to get these persons home, but they refused to leave. Like they, they were we were surprised that so many people even came out with the rain and all of that. We had much more crowded. So it was nice to see that energy in the room um, and whatnot. So yeah, people left happy. So they're happy, we're happy. They left edified as the mission. Um, that year as well, we also had Google Startup Weekend. I won't go into the process of Google Startup Weekend because it's a lot to take in, but feel free to check it out. Um, now it goes by Techstars Startup Weekend. So you can check that out. Uh, we had 25 persons pitch ideas. Five out of the 25 were chosen to work on for the weekend, which would have been Friday to the Sunday. Um, and three of those teams out of the five were chosen to go forward at the end of it into a three month incubator for their businesses. So for 2020, we had the Spotlight 3 completed their, their course of study. Um, along with that, we had a novel presentation. Uh, we had all of them join the masterclass by Carla Paris on trademarks. So within the Spotlight program, besides the, the set out course that we have for them for the entire year, we also tried to add in a number of novel events. So that masterclass was one of them. And I think this year as well was the year where um, Casey decided to do one-on-one -on -one mentorship with them. So they all went off to a studio and uh, they, whatever songs they were working on at that point, Casey was just working alongside with them. This class also started the the sessions that we had with Coursera. So we know 2020 was our pandemic pandemic year, right? The start of <laughs> the start and end of everything. So with that, we had to get a bit creative in how we were presenting some of the courses. So Coursera has two Berkeley courses that are right up their alley. Um, so we had all of the spotlight persons and we were hand in hand with them to apply for scholarships to the two courses and they got all scholarships to the Berkeley courses. So they were able to complete that. 
And uh, this year was the year that we also pivoted to online concerts. So we partnered with Aspire Agency and Golden Eagle to produce three online quarantine concerts. And uh, this year we also saw the most um, interaction and the most viewership and membership and everything for Music TT. So at, uh, for example, the very first um, online quarantine concert that we had with Aspire, so 59,000 plus persons attend that one, um, that first concert. And then the others were very similar in numbers as well. So there was a lot of visibility coming out of the, the quarantine, that is. And these are, of course, in addition to the other usual live music district events with the then Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. And we also had We Inside LMD events on IG, which was hosted by Brave Boy and Steph Kalu. So other 2020 activities, we had 15 reviewed webinars 15 persons attended the audio essential. So again, tying that back to the spotlights, we try to also have novel cases here, right? So the spotlight, as well as we sponsored um, 15 other persons to attend the audio essential. So they got that songwriting session with Theron Thomas of Our City. And we're very proud to mention the, the designation of Port of Spain as a city of music under the UNESCO Creative Cities Network. So we worked really hard alongside the team pulling this together, um, the Creative Cities NGO locally that was created to pull this together. And this was a year long application. So we were very happy to see that we got through to this prestigious network. Um, Tea Time was one of those things that we created during the pandemic year where we partnered with local and international business music professionals. I know some of you here would have actually been um, guests on the Tea Time show. And the aim behind that was to have the international perspective drawn as well as in, in whatever area and field their profession was, and then the local person in. So there were a lot of discussions about what happens internationally, what happens locally, how can we marry, how can we move forward. Thrive, um, some of you may be familiar with Thrive. This is run by a local, um, Ethan Ogis. He does not live here. Um, he is a, I like to call him a nomad, a digital nomad, because he lives ever so often in a bunch of different countries and travels and digital nomad lifestyle is a thing. So if, you, if you're feeling um, to look that up. So we partnered with him for his Create 48 event. And this was an international showcase. So we would have put out a call to our general public um, for material, whether it be performances, etc., And we would have submitted all of these to the Create 48 platform and this was aired internationally. There were over 34 countries, I think, that attended the, the Create 48 event. And of course, Music TT's consent saw a lot of visibility out of that. I don't have that figure with me right now, but it was definitely crossed that 50,000 mark. So as our chair mentioned, we, we attended, the Music City staff attended MIDEM June 2020. Um, MIDEM was free to, to all. It's very first time um, being digital, so it decided to do a free conference. And at that MIDEM conference, we were able to get quite a lot of other contacts from different places. Um, because they set up networking rooms for you to do that. So out of that, was the Music in Bezo, which is a conference in South Africa um, with over 120 speakers and 50 countries represented. So our chairman actually would have sat, was invited by the Music in Bezo to sit on a um, copyright panel. And I was invited to sit on a woman in music panel that year at the Music in Bezo.
I don't know the dates for Music and Bezo this year, but it's usually towards the end of August. So do feel free to check that out. We also have the addition of a resources page. So on this resources page for our website, you would find uh, metadata codes, you would find contracts, uh, TNT charts on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music, support groups, tech riders, and other free tech tools that you can use um, as a DIY musician. So just talking back to the contracts part of the resources page, we also have uploaded under those contracts um, one specifically for TNT because we know a lot of persons like to go on the internet and just Google contracts, you know, for bands or this, that, and the other. Um, but those laws don't pertain to the laws that we have here. So we did have um, a lawyer here create one for Trinidad and Tobago that is free of use. So feel free to check out our resources page. So this year's activities. So for Spotlight 2, we had the sync placement for Daniel Hamilton with Zumba. Um, and this happened through that so stereo partnership that we mentioned earlier. For Spotlight 3, we had the launch of Project Spotlight EP. So this was something new that we had added to the Spotlight program. We decided that they needed to do a final project. And this final project would be, of course, a song that they had to contribute to the EP. Um, so they worked together with Daryl Jove as a writer, and he was also a producer of this Project Spotlight EP, as well as JC, who is a very popular Australian um, producer who makes and master the entire thing. Um, so feel free to check them out, Daryl Jove as well as JC, that's J-H-A-Y-C, um, if you wanna see the accolades and all of that that are behind his name. So we then took this Project Spotlight EP and we had it distributed across all major platforms available for um, worldwide consumption. And we also signed an agreement with a company called Midnight Choir, which is another sync licensing company. They loved it so much. We played it for them. They were very, very interested in the songs that they heard. Um, so they wanted a one year exclusive contract. So we do have an exclusive contract with them to shop the album for a year. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So again, we did the same thing with this um, Spotlight cohort for having them apply for Coursera scholarships for the two programs that we set out and all persons were successful in that. The GEW, this was a first time event. Um, this was for Global Entrepreneurship Week 2020. Um, and it focused completely on the steel pan business. So everything that we would usually look at in the music business, so the contracts, the marketing, um, placements, et cetera, all of this happened, but for the steel pan realm in an effort to get some of those, um, some of the musicians into the music business side of things as well. So the Future Proofing TNT Music Panel, we had three part discussions on that, which formed part of the Reverb sessions. Um, the Live Music District partnered with GMAT, the Gospel Music Awards of Trinidad and Tobago this year to produce that event. Um, Therapy in association with Music TT presented the Island Stage. Now this was a first time happening here. Um, South by Southwest wanted Caribbean music inside of there and uh, Therapy, which is a company that manages Calpi, they were like, yeah, we can fill that void with you and present an island stage and whatnot. So the island stage was presented, it was done in Jamaica and it was streamed exclusively by South by, South by Southwest in association with Music TT presenting it. 
We don't have figures or statistics on that yet, but South by Southwest did say that it was the most popular stage that year. So I mentioned the reverb already. Right, so in partnership with Export TT and Caribbean Export, we have the Business of Music course and workshops. So this is an online training that happens for two weeks and then it translates into a two-day workshop so that persons can you know, ask questions and uh, talk about some other points that came out of the course training itself. So with that, um, last year, was it last year? No, for 2019, we also had that um, same music business workshop with Caribbean Export. And some of those persons also further applied to go to Germany to present their companies there and exhibit. So that as well came out of these partnerships. Um, music release roadmap live discussion with Brave Boy that happened a couple of weeks ago um, was very, very interactive and very informative. I urge you to check that out. The video is live on Facebook still. And for upcoming activities, we have a music business conference coming up from the 15th to the 17th of September. Um, call for auditions for Spotlight 5 opens in September as well. So we are urging musicians, please do apply. We do want you. Um, that last cohort, cohort we had had one panist. So we're hoping to see a lot more musicians coming out um, to audition. Um, and then the Spotlight Profs 4, which is the current cohort, they are set to do their album launch in October. So these are just some photos from the events, additional to all those that you would have seen before, as well as some of the artists that are in the Spotlight program here now. And uh, I shall play the video testimonial here. Hi, okay. Hi folks, just remember to mute your mic. I'm gonna play the testimonial here now. It's Rome, and um, I just wanna say that I appreciate what Music TT is doing in terms of the different ventures that they are putting in place to try and help promote the music industry as a whole. Oh, Music TT, yeah. I must say, um, from the live music district straight to the spotlight program has been amazing to me. I have done lots of performances. I've grown throughout those performances as well as the spotlight program. It has made me an all-rounder when it comes to being an artist. I want to say thank you to Music TT for giving me the opportunity to, to showcase my talent. This has been uh, an amazing, an amazing opportunity. I would like to commend the Music TT on all the work they've been doing on artist development and artist awareness, getting them ready and kind of creating a platform for a lot of the younger artists to kind of get themselves into the space and get them to people like me, which is fantastic. So I'll hand over to Mariella. Thank you, Melissa, for providing us with such a comprehensive overview and presentation of all of Music TT's engagements over the past three years. It is also my pleasure to invite Mr. Martin Raymond, director on, one of, on our Music TT's board, to provide us with some context for an upcoming project that we're actually working on. And I don't want to take away his thunder. So Mr. Raymond, this is all you. Right, hi, good morning, um, all protocols observed. Um, once again, I very much thanks to the team at um, Music TT, directors, um, et cetera, really um, helping to kind of move things forward. So Music TT is very much tasked with the 
um, assisting with the development of the music industry. Uh, and it's kind of critical, we realize it is an industry as a acquaintance of mine used to say, this is show business, not show fun. Um, and we are definitely part of a much larger international music industry. And one of the goals is really getting our artists plugged into that international music industry um, on a wider basis. So one of the initiatives that we've been working on is having more representation within the Grammy Awards, um, which is run by an organization called the Recording Academy. The, um, uh, sometimes I know people ask me, what is the importance of the, of the Grammy Awards? Why do we need this international recognition? Um, and it always kind of pleased me that I never hear someone raising a similar question about the Olympics and so on. What was the importance of the Olympics? Why do we need to be in the Olympics? Or why do we need to be in the Football World Cup? So um, Grammy Awards is very much an international benchmark for more than 64 years of excellence in music. And even though we have had artists from this region and um, artists and engineers, et cetera, um, be nominated and win awards. We've never really had much um, representation of visibility for our music. And over the years, there's been a lot of talk about a category for soca or calypso. Um, and while that is still a, a way off, two of the things we managed to do this year um, was one, um, increase the, an increase in the number of local um, participants mm -hmm. as voting members um, within the Grammy Awards. So this is one of the things that can lead, lead to change. Often nice people, when people talk about the Grammys, we think of some people out there, but um, all artists, once you have a certain level of work that's released internationally, you can take part and become a voting member. So it was an initiative started by a former um, board member, Mr. Casey Phillips, uh, along working together with a gentleman called um, Mr. Marlon Fuentes, who is one of the managers of the Global Music Division out in, um, of the Recording Academy. We really started a drive to try to increase representation initially among um, music producers. Uh, and we should be shortly starting a, a, a drive. We want to also increase participation from artists. So Music TT will be assisting in putting all that information there. How do you become a member of the Grammy Awards? What are the deadlines, et cetera? And within that context, we are also um, trying to encourage more persons, artists from here, um, regardless of your chosen genre of music to um, submit um, recordings for, for consideration. One of the things that um, the team I mentioned previously was able to achieve is the addition of a new category to the Grammy Awards. It took several years worth of work, but it's a new category we should definitely keep our eye on and it's called Best Global Music Performance. And what is significant about it is, it's number one, it's a single category in that one of the difficulties in achieving a, a Grammy category for the for Calypso Soca genre is the majority of categories at the Grammy Awards are album categories. And even in categories where a single song is honored, it is usually has to be what's called a track, which is a song derived from an album. So it took quite a bit of um, doing and persuasion and lobbying and writing to make the Recording Academy aware that there's a whole global world of music in the Caribbean, in the African diaspora, um, in the um, in Africa, in particularly North Africa, Middle East, and um, uh, parts of Asia, including India. There's a whole world of music that is driven strictly by singles, and it was this understanding that led to the creation of this new category, Best Global Performance, which um, is designed as a category, particularly I would say for soca oriented things. Um, so it's a category really set up for that. And we uh, hope to see a number of submissions within that category, within that category this year. Um, 
So it's really about increasing our visibility within, within the um, global music marketplace. Um, think about it, despite the pandemic, um, the global music industry has seen tremendous growth over the last few years, and including in the last year. And there's been tremendous growth, um, particularly in South America, um, one of the fastest growing regions, um, regions in the world. And one of the goals of Music TT is to really sort of encourage artists, particularly to understand the value, the use of recorded music, both in terms of sales, streaming, licensing opportunities, et cetera, because that is what has been driving the, um, that is what has been driving the growth in the music industry. Um, the pandemic um, really affected the live music industry, the um, performance industry worldwide. That is really the sector that took, uh, took a tremendous hit. Um, conversely, streaming and even record sales, even vinyl sales, saw tremendous increases within, um, within the last year. So there, is, there are opportunities there. and We kind of hope to kind of connect our artists there because for the longest while, the, I would say maybe the last 20 years, the music industry in Trinidad has shifted away from an emphasis on recorded music to, towards almost entirely generating revenue via, via live performances. And we think there needs to be a balance, a balance of, a balance of, of both. Um, it's interesting to me, um, many of the younger generation I interact with, a number of younger people and many of the younger generation are completely unaware and um, actually doubt me when I say there was a time when our artists, including Calypso, et cetera, used to earn the majority of their revenue for via record sales. I, I've had young people completely doubt that that is, that is even so. That tells you how far we've moved from the approach to the business. So that's definitely one initiative to look out for. And we'll, um, we'll definitely be kind of publishing guidelines and assisting in any way um, that we can for persons who want to take part of that of that opportunity, etc. On a related note to that, the um, with with regards to being seen as a business and an industry, um, once again, I direct you to the um, resources page of the Music TT website. Among the resources there, you will find are. Uh, Country, country yeah. specific charts. Yeah. So this is a this is a relatively yeah. recent yeah. development. All right, I'll go on. This is a relatively mm -hmm. this is a relatively recent development. Maybe in the last um, two or three years, as data gathering and use of metadata has um, improved, services like Spotify, YouTube, iTunes are able to track sales and streaming activity and to be able to generate charts. So about two years ago. Um, YouTube started publishing country charts, which are available. Um, you can access it via Music TT resources page, where um, on a week by week or month by month basis, you can see what are the most popular um, um, songs and artists via YouTube. In fact, it was with the advent of that chart, maybe I think two years ago, that the wider music industry, uh, the wider public in Trinidad, woke up to the fact that this phenomenon of Trinidad was happening um, almost un under the radar. Um, you can also access Spotify charts. Spotify is now within, within our region, but you can get a sense of um, a, what artists here are both um, what is happening on Spotify locally, as well as what artists are gaining traction in other, other parts of the world, as well as the um, Apple iTunes chart. So I really encourage, um, Artists, particularly um, music business persons, people who want to start labels, et cetera, to get familiar with those things, uh, um, see where the trends are. The cool thing about the, the YouTube one is you can actually drill down by city. I think they do about four cities. So you can see what is happening in Port of Spain versus San Fernando versus Arima. And all I say is some very interesting differences even within a small, a small country like ours. Um, with the data there to use. One of the projects um, the TT is hoping to um, look at perhaps within the next fiscal year is using these different source of, sources of data to create an official um, music chart in 
in um, Trinidad and Tobago by combining these sources, combining analysis of radio, airplay, etc. Uh, we definitely feel this is something that is critical to being seen as a business. Um, just to give you an example, up to a few years ago, um, I would ask students of mine um, a question I get asked often by international record companies. What is the most popular song in Trinidad and Tobago? And I would get five different answers. And people would insist, no, this is the biggest song right now. And I'll tell them, prove it. Where's the data? How, how do we know that that is the biggest song? And this is one of the things that a lot of international record companies look for. They need a, a, an authoritative source. If we say, this is what is hot in Trinidad, um, we have to have the data to show. And an official chart goes, uh, goes a long way towards um, creating that, creating that um, business, business environment. So something we'll be looking at, uh, most likely we'll hoping to partner with um, other interested parties. So um, it's like maybe a, a, some sort of process for, for, doing, for doing that. Um, but so once again, so in conclusion, um, I think we have to see, we have to see these, um, we have to see these present times we are in as an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for music. Um, and just in closing, I would like to, uh, um, I would like to, to, to leave you with something to think about. Um, on the, at the start of the lockdown, May, March 13th, 2020, a Japanese colleague of mine um, said to our students, um, as we now entering into lockdown, that when all this is over, the world is going to want to celebrate and nobody does celebration better than Trinidad and Tobago music. So that's something I'd like you to, 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 to think about where that is concerned. And, this is coming from a, a Japanese person, part of the second largest music market in the world. That's something to think about. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Raymond, for your presentation and for sharing the commentary that you received. It is definitely something I know every single music stakeholder would have to take note of because we are praying all for an end to this pandemic and we cannot wait to celebrate with our music, which I believe the whole world is lucky to even hear. So um, I'm asking everyone now if they have any questions, please raise your hand, please post it in the chat. We are all here and willing to answer your questions. So if you want us to expand on a point that was raised that you need clarification on, we are more than happy to do that. That is why we are here today. And we are also streaming this on our Facebook, so we can also check that chat group and see how things are going there. Martin. Right, so, yes, so to, 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 to answer that um, to answer that question, what we are looking at is I think we there are, what we're seeing, what music TT is seeing is there are enough sources of data, including um, including streaming, um, ways of tracking radio, airplay, um, um, uh, et cetera, to create an official chart drawn from all these streams. Um, we're still working or researching the exact formula, for instance, um, Billboard magazine, they actually they have, for instance, they have their own proprietary formula, that uh, algorithm that uh, adjusts according to sales and streaming patterns. So there are a number of variables. Uh, what you're saying there is enough I think right now uh, there's never been a better time to be able to create an accurate an accurate chart because you have access to all these sources of data. I know there are some other companies um, locally that are working on different aspects of data gathering. I don't know if um, Mr. Arnold might have some more information on that, but 
essentially what music TT is looking at is a ways of pulling all these different sources of data together to create an official an official chart similar to what is done what is done in um in the UK um, for instance where there's a an official an official chart culled from different sources of data yeah I mean the only thing I would add to that uh, Martin is the fact that um because uh, organizations like the Music Copyright Organization of TNT, better known as COT, they, they, they um, used to, up to just pre-COVID, do a local chat, which was based, purely based on the data that they have from their database um, software. And that used to just, of course, there was more foreign music than local music being played when they combined. But um, after all of that was done, um, they plan to do continue with that. So my point about collaborating with agencies going forward, I, I think your point is well taken in the context of Music TT again, collaborating with other agencies. I think that's a beautiful place to start to deal with that. And um, just to add to that, so I think even within that, when I say a local chart, it may not just be one chart. Uh, so this is, for instance, what the UK chart right. company does, what Billboard does. There are different ways of looking. You can have your top 40, but you can also have, um, I think one thing that might be nice to add to the current chart that COT um, does is thanks to Spotify, we can now track the activity of local artists internationally. So it may be possible to build a, a local chart that reflects activity by local artists, not just in Trinidad, but, 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 um, but um, globally. Similar to I think what um, Billboard is doing with it. They have a global music chart where they have like a, a group, it's in two parts, they have a global music chart, including American artists and a global music chart, excluding American artists. So the, the main thing is by having an official chart, uh, um, by having, an, an official chart, you, you show that you have a business. So just to give you one example, back in the day, um, um, I remember being told by an American record executive, because we had a record that had sold 10,000 copies in Trinidad. And they were like, that's fantastic because based on population size, if you can sell 10,000 records in Trinidad, that means you can sell um, hundred thousand records in the, um, in the US. They were looking looking at it that way. And for instance, a number one record, the, there's the idea of having a number one record carries a tremendous amount of weight. I'm sure recently you may have seen, um, let's say the K-pop group BTS boasting that they have number one in a hundred and something countries, Trinidad being one of those countries that they were able to say, hey, look, we are number one here, we are number one there, um, um, et cetera. So, uh, within the music industry, um, um, this is where you're seeing a sign of, um, of, of, of business and of a business-like approach. If you can say definitively, this is the most popular song, um, um, then you have, you have a platform to build on. And as I said, internationally, many artists, now there's this little kind of competition to see who can have the most number ones in the most countries. Um, kind of thing, even to the point of artists really reaching out to thank their fans in specific countries. The last one, I think, being um, Demi Lovato, post personally thanking Trinidad and Tobago for giving a number one uh, uh, a few years, a few years ago. So this shows you how seriously artists take artists take this. So it, it's still in, in development, and hopefully um, we can build this out for the next year or so. Thank you, um, Mr. Raymond and Mr. Arnold for sharing insights onto where Music TT is heading in terms of what we're gonna be doing with tracking data to actually have factual charts, so to speak. Um, in the meantime, while we wait on any further questions, I just wanna encourage all of you, Melissa would have touched on it. Music TT has a reverb webinar series and this is a shameless plug, but a necessary one. So next week, Thursday at 12 noon, we are having black box money and black box money is actually something that I think every person in the music industry in Trinidad should be aware of. The reason being is that this is money which is actually unallocated royalties that are generated by song usage but is never paid out to a specific artist, performer or songwriter 
due to missing metadata information. So a lot of people are always saying, you know, all the metadata tagging is so tedious and they try to take shortcuts, but that results in you not getting all the monies that is owed to you. And it just goes into a black box that is then redistributed and you miss out on this. So we are really excited that this is going to be hosted next week, Thursday, 12 noon on Facebook by our metadata specialist in Trinidad, as I like to call him, and which is Mr. Keith Kirk of Motif Music Services. And also we have Empress Rose from International Stars Healing out of Jamaica. So I encourage all of you to join in on that and other persons in the music industry, you know, who may not be up to scratch on their metadata and what is going on in terms of collecting their royalties please let them join us for this conversation. So do we have any further questions? Okay, if any of y'all are shy and you're are thinking about what we have said, you can always reach out to the Music TT team at info at musicttt.co.tt. And I promise the entire team of three persons, one person will reach out to you within 24 hours, I promise. Okay, as we have any questions, would any, would our chairman, Melissa, anyone Hi. like to share? Well, Paula, Paula has her hand raised. Oh, yes, Paula, speaking of the metadata, has there been an uptick in accessing the ISRC since it can now be done locally? Melissa, would you like to share insights on what's going on with our ISRC? Sure, so Music TT partnered with COT, um, to do this ISRC campaign, the TTISRC campaign. Um, now that the TT codes are available to us, um, those codes are housed with CUT. So CUT is the country manager for the TTISRC. Um, so you can only get it there. It's a very simple process. It takes about 24 to 48 hours. You just apply and you get the codes. You get a batch of 100,000 codes, which should suffice for you in your lifetime of use. Um, to date, since the campaign, the campaign is now 20 months old. We have 211 persons that are registered for TTISRC um, code batches. So we're hoping that that definitely doubles or triples within the coming um, fiscal 22 year, because we have a very robust ISRC campaign that will be rolled out to you from October. So yes, 211. And just to make it clear, that is not the number of songs that use TTISRC codes, which will be a lot more. But at this time, we don't have tracking me mechanisms to tell us how many songs have used it. But I guess you can do some sort of guesstimate. So you have 211 uh, master rights holders that have TTISRC codes. So of course, the number of songs will definitely be way more than that at this point. Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. So I know we do not have a shy batch inside of here. I'm seeing some of the names and I know it is not a shy batch. So <laughs> feel free to shoot your questions, whether you raise your hand and you wanna speak or you want to type it in the chat. Okay, isn't that the point of the ISRC for the music to be tracked? How does it work then? I am not a tech techie, so um, Mate, if you're able, or Martin, and you want to take that. Yes, question. so um, I, I think the point we're making is currently music TT ourselves. We, we're not in a position to actually track, um, to track I, uh, um, ISRCs, but that, that is the point of it, that you can, you can track, you can track where music is being used where music is being used, um, et cetera. I think either John or, or um, John or Martin yeah. might be able to say a little more uh, on that, how, how it is actually done. But I, I, think, I think that was the point that Melissa was making. Yeah. Um, yeah. We at Music TT, we don't necessarily have access to that data, but we should be able to get that data from 
one of the companies that like the Cilia Audio ID, et cetera, that is doing the tracking. Yeah, I mean, my, my two cents to add to that is that the ISRC code is something used internationally. It's a special recording code that, that that's used. It's like a fingerprint. Your song now has a code that's associated with that particular song. So um, part of the problem is that a lot of artists have been registering their songs utilizing US ISRC codes um, because people are using all these aggregators like CD Baby and TuneCore and so on. And when you do that, they actually give you ISRC codes. Um, but those are all with a US base. We now have ISRC codes with a TT base. And what, what Cut had done was basically started by, by getting the, the permission to now be the country manager, as, as Melissa says, and then looking for master right owners and producers to now have access to a batch of codes that they can now utilize with their performers that they have with them. So the SRC issue, Paula, you're, you're actually correct. It is a kind of tracking, which is the fingerprint of each song. So that if that song appears anywhere in, in the world, and because of the reciprocal arrangements, that song information can be sent um, between organizations and track your royalties and so on. So I think what Music TT is doing is creating an environment where we help with let these, let people in the industry know, be aware and, and, and be educated on the ISRC. And partnering with COT is really to kind of help the advocacy of making sure that information goes out there to others. Hopefully, and I think Martin alluded to it, if in the next three to four years, we have a high volume of ISRC TT codes, that will help the tracking and certainly provide us with the kind of data that we can show off with. But at this time, it's a slow game, um, crawl, creep, walk, run. So I, I think we're probably somewhere in the, I don't know if to say creep to walk, I'm not too sure, but we're somewhere there. Thank you. So we have a question from Facebook. Um, it says filmmakers usually have to acquire rights to music on film on screen content. I would like to know if filmmakers can reach out to Music TT to assist with the process. This was asked by Leslie Ann. Right. So um, no, Music TT is not a CMO. So we are not a collective management organization. We are not a, a PS. We, we, that's not our mandate. Um, we, if, if someone came to us, we would certainly refer them to a CMO, a collective management agency or organization. They are responsible for the collection of royalties and also they, um, they monitor and they also protect the rights of owners. These rights will vary. In the case of film, the main right there would be synchronization rights. And depending on the what the artists have said in their contract with the CMO, that will determine the level of engagement and negotiation with the persons who are doing film and so on. But certainly we don't we don't monitor or collect royalties, nor administer rights? To answer that question, yeah. Yeah, I just want to add to that, that I think one of the initiatives, well, Creative TT as a whole, um, so Music TT together, Film TT and Fashion TT is working on is creating linkages with filmmakers. So um, let's say if a filmmaker wants to, an international filmmaker wants to do a film here, um, and we can hopefully use our influence to ensure that they use um, some a piece of local music in one of the scenes, maybe local fashions, um, things like that. So those are the sort of reciprocal things that are done in 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 other part in other parts of the world, um, etc. So that is more the type of thing uh, Music TT would be able to do. I'm, I'm not sure where those initiatives are at the moment, but um, we are looking at that as very much sort of international international best, international best practice. 
Thank you for your response. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions. I actually just have a quick addition to that for the film person. Um, if you want further information, especially with the, the film side of things, please do reach out to our sister company, Film TT. Yeah. I know our stakeholders are a lively bunch, so I'm thinking maybe we were really comprehensive in our presentations. Sometimes in a presentation, when you don't get questions, you were very clear with what you said. So sometimes that's what happens. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> So this feels exactly like most of my Zoom classes. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. So on, on, awesome. on my own behalf, um, uh, Mariella, let me just say as, as chair of, of Music TT and on behalf of everybody, um, my own self, I really want to say thanks for this opportunity for us to share what Music TT has been doing. I think it's always important that we take the time to share what we're doing and make people aware and to inform, educate. I think it's so important in, in, in a society where we now have free social media that can you know, create all kinds of information. So we have to make sure we do our duty to make sure that what we say, these are the facts and so on. So I'm really glad and thank all of you stakeholders for being here with us today, um, I'm sure um, the GM and, and Marina, of course, in closing will certainly do that. But let me just say on behalf of as chair, we really want to thank you for being here and thanks for attending and spread the word, you know, share the news. Yes. So I just want to say again, thank you to our chairman for being present and also our board director, Mr. Martin Raymond. I want to thank the Ministry of Trade. I want to thank our minister, our PS. Music TT may be a team of three persons on the ground, but we definitely have a lot of helping hands and we could not do what we do without all this collaborative support that we're afforded. And we also wanna thank all our stakeholders. You all have been a dream to work with over the last three years. You are always quick to contact us, work with us. You know the situation, just like most state companies, we are underfunded and over eager to use our funding as best as we can. And you're always so helpful in trying to see how best we can collaborate. And that is one thing we will always continue to do is to work with you to help make all our music industry dreams a reality. So I am gonna leave this to our general manager to close, but I just wanna say thank you very much for working with us for the past three years. And I hope we can continue to work together. Thank you, Mariella, and thank you, John. Um, they haven't left much for me to say in my closing. Uh, so I would just like to reiterate on the stakeholder part of things that, you know, we're very happy that persons reach out to us. Um, you know, especially if there is ambiguity or anything surrounding what we do, we're always happy to have those lively discussions one on one and, you know, clarify whatever needs to be done. Um, thank you for reaching out to us on our projects, you know, and even projects that you have in the pipeline that you'd like to see happen. We're always willing to to work together and make sure that, you know, we, we see these visions come to life. So thank you for working with us. Thank you for being amenable. Thank you, you know, just for, for being in this fair with us. So, um, and thank you for attending. So <laughs> with that, I think we will definitely close off this presentation now. And yeah, I wish everyone a wonderful Thursday. And just before we end, please be reminded of the Reverb webinar we have taking place next Thursday at 12 noon. That will be streamed live on Facebook. Thank you.